Hey yo, this the infamous McBenzo, and you're listening to DJ Sin right here on London Hot Radio. Bring that party back. London Hot Radio. Yeah. So we're here live, and I got a very, very, very special guest in the building, and we've been chopping up for a minute on on personal levels and. He's very, very influential. That's one. Um, he's been in the game for a very, very, very long time. Uh, bucked head with a lot of people. He's been a part of a big brand um, that's seen a lot of artists perform through it and all that. We do have Mike Benzo in the building. What's happening, bro? Mick Benzo, Mick Benzo, like Mick. Mickey Mouse. Mick Benzo, baby. Sorry. Like man, you know? My what apologies on that. Mick Benzo, yes. And we have here on the building. And bro, listen, when I say the introduction, I'm not even messing around because you've been around, bro. You've got a story. And you've been in hip-hop for a very, very, very long time. Um, so give us a little background. Like, when did your journey in hip-hop actually start? What year? Okay, the official birthday of hip-hop is November 12th, 1974. Right. And the official birthday of the Universal Zulu Nation is 1973. The hip-hop world on this planet, so-called Earth, should recognize November 12th to pay tribute to those who have paved the way and led the foundation, as well as those who have continued and rich traditions of the culture. In fact, the Universal Zulu Nation calls on the world to recognize the whole month of November as Hip-Hop History Month, which has been done by Resolution 331 already. All right? Right. That being said, and to let the whole planet Earth celebrate what hip hop has given to the youth mm -hmm. and the adult culture from all around the world. Right. Now, with saying that, I'm Mick Benzo. I am one of the co founders of the Universal Zulu Nation, whether you like it or not. We are the first family in hip hop. 100%. Hip hop is defined as a culture movement which is expressed through various artistics, medium, we call elements. The main element known as MCing, that's for the rapping, the DJing, the writing, or you call the aerosol art, or the b-boy or the b-girl, which is breaking. And the fifth element is knowledge. Within the past 49 years, Hip-hop culture has greatly influenced the entertainment world with its creative contribution in music, dance, art, poetry, and fashion. In 1970s, approximately 49 years prior, and 10 years prior to its global recognition, it was celebration of life, which great, was greatly adapted adopted each of its elements forming movements, which has embraced internationally, which I'm talking to UK right now. Due to its energy, dynamic, and monumental, hip-hop culture has become the tradition for many. The key uplifting and reinformation, as well as billion-dollar industry. I'm Mick Benzo from the Universal Zulu Nation. I had that in my head. I wrote it down so I can put that on your circuit. We are the first family of hip hop. Well, we actually did um, our small anniversary at the Revolution of Hip Hop, which is the Hip Hop Museum located in the Boogie Down Bronx. It's called the Revolution of Hip Hop because the big museum is being built and by 2024, the whole building will be up and they have tenants staying in there for low income. We have stores in there and we will have the museum in the location on Exterior Avenue in the Bronx, New York. So we did celebrate. There were break dancers that came out, and some of the gang members that were with the Peacemakers and the Black Spades came out and wore colors because if anybody remembers in the 70s, it was all about the gangs, not Crips and Bloods, gangs. The way we knew you was a gang member is because you wore a Lee jacket and on the back of that Lee jacket, it said what gang you was with. Whether you were with the Javelin, the Royal Crown, the Seven Nomad, the Black Spades, the Peacemakers, you know, the Fordham Baldies, wherever you was, you wore a jacket. So we realized that us holding turf, meaning to own a block, when the mayor of the city doesn't own a block, what the world was we doing? 
we were very, I guess I would call it a survival kit, to be honest, because we had nothing. All we had was friends. And the friends were more family to us than our families were because we got along with them a lot more. We did bad things with them a lot more, but we had to change that. And in 1974, we changed it to hip hop. And in 1973, we came up with a plan to say, why don't we all get together and join a nation? It wasn't the um, nation of Islam, but it was the Zulu nation because we all going for the same goal. So we decided that was the most respectable thing that we could do for our city in New York City. We didn't realize it was 51 more states. Unfortunately, it was. And hip hop burst it out. So, um, Coho, I, I mean, let, I want to get back to the story of Benzo now, yeah? So, yes. um, what made you get into hip hop in the first place and exactly what year was it? Let's start again. Well, that was in 1973 when we did Universal Zulu Nation in 1974. We birthed the name hip hop yep. that was already being said by a gentleman by the name of Keith Cowboy from the group Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and another young brother named Love Bug Starsky. We just took what they were saying and then we created a culture. And in 1974, hip hop was born. Right. And in, 19, in 1984, which 10 years later, a gentleman by the name of Ice T uh, was introduced to us through Africa Islam, the Prince of Charm, the son of Bambada. Right. And by 1986, by 1986, I was the acting East Coast manager. Didn't know anything about managing nothing because there weren't managers in the hip hop business at first. It was right. just friends and family, you know. But I became his East Coast representative, and I've been with Ice T up until today. That's all the way. All the way. Um, I've had the pleasure of actually working with artists like Fat Joe for 13 years. I managed Fat Joe. Imagine. I represented Big Pun, Big Punisher. Yes, Big Pun. To the day he left the building, you know, I represented Lord Finesse. I worked with the Furious Five. I worked with the Force and D's. I worked with Chief Rocker, Busy B, and a host of others. I mean, they can Google and find all that out. But right now. Me and Ice-T, in 2012, we did a documentary called The Art of Rap. It was a documentary. It was on Tubu, Amazon, Netflix, and even in the movie theaters. We decided to turn that into a concert festival. For the last 10 years, that's what we've been doing. Giving you guys out there true hip-hop. Because in order to keep hip-hop alive, you got to go back to where it originated from and give the classic artists that same platform we're giving the new artists today. Not saying that the art of rap only does classic artists, but most of the time, that's the only budget we can afford. So when we can afford that, that's what we do. We go out with those artists and we can, if we can afford a Cardi B or a Lady Gaga and anybody else, they'll be on that stage too. We're here, we ain't going anywhere. Because you mentioned Digger the Crates, you mentioned Fat Joe, you mentioned Lord Finesse. Um, so, have you got a Big L story? Uh, yes, Mr. Lamont Coleman, better known as Big L. Boop, boop. Was getting, Love Big was L. Getting ready, was getting ready to be signed to a label. Right. Which was jay Z label. Right. But Damon Dash, one of, he called me and said, hey, Mick, I'm looking for a manager. Why don't you imagine? You work with Lord Finesse. You know me because he's with DITC, Digging in the Crates crew. Mm. And I'm like, well, let me think about that for a minute. And before I could think about it, someone took that man's life. I but, rest, rest but, in peace, you know, but, because he was a phen L, phenomenal lyricist. Phenomenal. No, Big L was the son of Lord Finesse because they rapped almost the same. Yeah. Compound and punchlines that no one could work could rock with them, man. They were very, very unique at it. And Lord Finesse is still unique at it. Uh, rest in peace, Big L. We definitely miss you. 
you know, but uh, Definitely. yeah. Definitely. Yes, I know him. He was DITC, Digging in Crate's family as well, you know. I know Diamond D when he was working with the Fugees and doing his thing. You know, I talked to him a couple of weeks ago. But um, we all actually really stay in tune and in touch with each other even till today. Right. I, st I, perform I, I actually saw Diamond D perform for the first time when I was like 14 years old in Subterranea in London, which is crazy. Yeah. I remember that as well. Um, so, again, let's go to a couple more questions. Have you got um, a big pun story? Yeah, big pun used to call. I had a show in New York City. It was called the Mike Check Show. And Mr. Steve Smith, rest in peace, he was the program director at Hot 97. Right. And the Furious Five, Melly Mel, Scorpio, Raheem, and Kid Creole, I had a show called The Mike Check Show. And Pun used to call that show every Friday. And he used to spit bars. But sometimes he used to spit bars and talk about taking off somebody's head and, and biting them and eating them. I'm like, oh, this guy's <laughs> crazy. So when I moved to the state of Virginia, uh, rest in peace, rest in peace, a lot of people passed away. Right. A gentleman by the name of, of, of Full Flex, who was Fat Joe's road manager and Fat Joe's best, best friend, called me up and said, look, man, we got to get Pun a deal. I'm like, you talking about, you talking about that big dude, big punisher, the guy that he talking about, he, he said, no, nah, Mick, 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 he's won at the Apollo like two times, but I'm standing in Virginia at that time, so I wasn't aware of it. I said, oh, yeah, 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 we get him a deal, you know, so we made the calls around and Lo and behold, Big Pun was signed to Loud Records. And he was the funniest guy. He played a hell of a lot. Just play, play, play. I mean, you be sleep. He's throwing ice at you and act like he didn't do it, act like he sleep. He was just a fun guy to be around. But it was one hell of a Latino lyricist. Yeah, man. Single-handedly, he's the first Latino to go platinum. Cypress Hills was a group. I'm talking about as a solo artist. Big Pun did it by himself. Right, 100%. RIP to Big L and Big Pun. Um, again, both phenomenal lyricists that you actually got to spend time with, work with, and be a part of their journeys, which is a part of your journey, which is remarkable. Um, right. So let's go a little bit back to Ice-T for a second. So... Your connection with Ice T, it built, um, and then how did you get into the whole art of rap situation? How did that come about? Well, the art of rap situation was really an Ice T idea that he said that hip hop was on the respirating table dying. Right. It needed to be resuscitated. And we were like, What are you talking about? He said, Listen, man, they're forgetting about where this music really came from. I know I'm from LA. This is ICE, I'm from LA, but I live in New York, and I see hip hop is not the way it was when I first got in. So I'm gonna do, I wanna do a documentary. The ICE T said, I wanna do a documentary, and I wanna talk to all of the people that I grew up on, and they grew up behind me, which was like the Snoop and the Ice Cubes grew up behind ICE, but he's talking about the Melly Mel, the Love Buck Star, I mean, the the Chief Rocket Busy B, the Africa Bambada, the Eric B, I mean, the Rock Hem, um, talking about the brand Nubians. He grew up on New York radio style. So when Ice T came out, you got to remember, his first album came out 10 years after hip hop was born. Right. So that means 10 years later, Ice T came out. If you remember the line that Ice T said, he said, 10 years ago, I used to listen to rappers flow, talking about the way they used to rock at the disco. I like how that was going down. Dream about ripping the mic with my own sound. My boys said, Ice, that shit sounds like them. So he sat back, thought up a new track, didn't fantasize, he kicked the pure facts. A young brother from the, a young brother from West Coast LA, South Central, where the Crips and the Bloods play. See the difference? He said it. An OG album. If you listen to it, you can hear him tell you, 10 years ago, I used to listen to Rapper's Flow. That means he came out 10 years after hip hop was there. But what he did was he showed hip hop that there were other elements or other subjects to talk about in the music game. We did not truly understand 
bitches and hoes and pimps and this and that because New York City was built on fun, fun, fun. That's why I made a record called Bring That Party Back. If you listen to it, Bring That Party Back by Mick Benzo. Um, Ice-T was telling us what he see mm. in his community. We didn't know these things were happening in Los Angeles, California, when we first got attached to ICE, when the police were literally beating people for no reason until you saw the Rodney King tape. But they were doing that in L.A. way before you saw the Rodney King. And Ice-T was telling us what's going on in L.A. Right. Ghetto, ghetto boys. Everybody tells their story from the neighborhood they live in, their hood, or their state, because we didn't know what was happening. Again, Ghetto Boys, love them, man. And they came out just before, like, the West Coast death row takeover and the Snoop Dr. Dre era, you know, with just past the NWA part, um, which is crazy. Um, and you actually got to see all of that, bro, which is mad, and you've got stories for all of that. Like, I could literally have three, four more shows with you just due to your stories, which is crazy. So out of all the people you've worked with in hip-hop, who's been, like, the most inspiring to you? To get to work with and i would have to say it's ice t because you got to remember ice t transitioned from being on a record mm. to literally being in the movies you know from tank girl to ricochet um yeah, he was Mimani. in the movies very early as well i think he was one of the people that pioneered that rapper going into movies situation yeah. you know so new jack, new jack city new jack city yes sir and then from there he even took on a role, you know, uh, doing a TV show. And now, shit, he's on Law & Order, Special Victor Unit on NBC for 23 seasons. That's oh, my God. But you see the transition. Then not only he does that, he built up a rock band called Body Count. So you got to be inspired by someone who's taking hip-hop and turning it into a lot more businesses for themselves. 100. Not just staying in the hip hop. And now, oh man, yo, you remember him? He was a hip hop artist, man. Yeah, what happened? I don't know, man. He fell off. That's inspiring from hip hop to rock to TV to movies to even doing a podcast. Me and Ice T had a podcast called Ice T and Mick Benzo Final Level Podcast. So you see the growth that hip hop has done. For lots of people, from LL Cool J and Ice Cube. I mean, look at it. Look around. Everybody's getting into even 50 Cent. 100%. Yeah, even 50 Cent. Hip-hop hip -hop is a ladder that you should climb up on. And remember, climbing up on that ladder, do not break the steps as you're going up. Because one day you may mess around and have to come down them steps. And when you broke them, meaning that you disrespected a lot of people and didn't take care of a lot of people, when you fall, you're going to fall flat on your ass. You're not going to be able to walk back down them steps. Treat people with love. 100%. And I think that's really wise words to anybody out here. Again, one thing I'll tell people, if you're not about it, like just don't act it. Do you and be yourself. And that's what hip hop is about. It's an expression of yourself. So do not try and imitate other people because they looking cool that's what you think that you gotta do it's not be yourself and express that in hip-hop because that's what it's about right bro i mean hip-hop is a voice for the world right because lots of people do not read a book but making a record that record could hit 52 states in one day one record could hit 52 states, meaning they don't have any more record stores, but on the radio, when you write a book, a lot of people get lost because they don't read your book. Like Ice-T made a new book. Oh, I'm not answering that. Oh, let me answer that real quick. That, that might be for my homeless thing we're doing. Go for it. Go for it. Hey, Carlos, what's happening? Hey, how you doing? I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I'm on a Zoom call. What's happening, baby? No, I didn't forget about you. They had hit me. I went, and, I went and seen them. They told me to wait till Friday because they had, they had like three um, things they was doing. So they said, when I see them today, they should know what they will have to give. You know, because I gave them your flyer and gave them the number. But they said they, they were so allocated to so many people that Eric had them. You know, this place here, this place here. So they said, give them the Friday. 
Every, okay. Everything should be out by Friday's They should know what they have. All right, so, all right. I appreciate it because Sunday is our event that we're doing for 168 homeless people at the shelter, and some of the kids are autistic. So whatever they can, with, in Queens, yes, sir, yes, sir, that's Sunday. Whatever they can donate far as, it could be Pampers, it could be socks. It could be, I mean, we got 40 boxes of new coats. We have a bunch of toys that I'm sitting on right here. If you call and tell me to come pick it up, I'll pick up wherever I got to pick up at. Because Sunday, we got food, we got everything for everybody. We do this because we care, you know what I mean? Not because we have to, because we care. So. Okay, so as soon as I'm out and I, I'm with them, I'll just hit you up. Okay? okay, thank you very much, and I truly appreciate it. All right. All right, bye-bye. All right. One more time. I'm, oh, sorry. I'm you, sorry. Wait, no, you're good. You guys are getting to see business in the f in the motion, and this is what happens on London Hot Radio because you're seeing some real people in the industry. So you saw that live. So one more time, let the people know what are you doing in Queens, and let them know about the little charity event, and let them know where it is so that they can be down there. Okay. So basically, what what we do is, I'm a manager. The management company is called Pay Up Management. And the other part of it is the art of rap, the art of comedy, and the art of R&B. And then we have a nonprofit organization, me and Ice-T, called Mel Awareness Foundation. Because we care about you guys as men. No race, no creed, no color. Men, we care about you. Do you know because what? Bro, that's a big topic, and that's a whole nother conversation and a whole nother show, you know, because you've literally hit a, a nail on the coffin, and that's yeah. a big conversation right there. You know what I mean? That a lot of people, I think, should be talking about because I do feel that there's a lot of things that are taken to granted with narratives and stuff like that, and people don't. Un I do think men are being devalued in the world a lot. So right. big up yourself right. for that, bro, and that piece of information. Carry on, man. Well, so... It's you know, about I want to say, you know, so Mel Awareness Foundation, we give time and spend money in the month of November as well for Thanksgiving because we know a lot of people, families, cannot afford a real Thanksgiving meal. A Thanksgiving meal, if you've ever done one, because I do it every year, the meals cost you $1,000 just for the food. And then you got to cook it like I do. So what we do is we go, this year we did it at a church. We must have fed, I don't know, about 90 people probably and gave away 40, 50 turkeys that we brought because no one gave it to us. So now Christmas is coming. So we do, for the last 12 years, we do a toy drive and we do it in certain places. Last year, I did it in my backyard, which was Bronx River Houses. I did the turkey day and the toy drive because kids are there. So this year, we're going to a shelter in Queens, New York. Because we don't care about one community, we care about communities with the S. And there's 168 people that the mayor of New York City brought in, and I hate to say the word, please do not take it disrespectful, they're immigrants. But guess what? They're human beings, and they have kids, and some of them are autistic. They need food, they need clothes, they need toys, and some cannot afford to do that. We're going to feed 168 people, and I guarantee you 168 kids will walk out there with a toy, and Santa Claus will be there, and we'll have some games, some painting. We do things because we care. That's all we care about is communities and human beings, not color. Um, yeah, I pull up the address. The address already is December the 18th. I know that by heart, and the location once I once I get in my car, I put it in there. No, I'm just playing. Respectfully, you are busy, so you can yeah. you're allowed to forget a thing here and there, bro. Yeah, it's okay. okay, it's a Christmas celebration. It's located at the Sanctuary Village, the Sanctuary Village at one twelve dash fifteen Northern Boulevard, Queens, New York. The Christmas celebration is the twelfth annual, and it's for autistic kids and the homeless. And Ralph McDaniel from Video Music Box will be there. Uh, Mikey D, who lives in Queens, will be there. Roxanne Shante will be there um, because she lives in Queens. Uh, we have the homeless hero. His name is Sham. The homeless hero will be there, and um, 
look, we just going to take care of the people that's there. If people come out, they're more than welcome to come. Again, it's the sanctuary, and it's located at 112-15 Northern Boulevard, which is Queens, New York, because we take money that we make. We put some aside to take care of others, not just ourselves. There you go, and that's big. So let's get back to the hip-hop story now. Um, you have seen a lot of people come on through the the Art of Rap platform, and you guys had an event as well, right? Um, showcasing a lot of the talent. Tell us some of the names that you had on, on the event. Well, for starts, you know we had Eric, we had Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, rest in peace, Biz Marquis. Rest in peace, Biz Marquis. Rest in peace, DMX. Rest in peace, DMX. Rest in peace, Prodigy of Mob D. Rest in peace, Prodigy. Big up yourself. Rest in peace, Love Bug Starsky. He was on it. Now, we've had Sugar Hill Gang. We've had Naughty by Nature. We've had 50 Cents. We've had The Game. We've had Cypress Hills. We've had Bone Thugs and Harmony. Do me a favor. All you got to do is go to theartofrap.net and you'll see a lot of the artists perform for us. And there are videos there as well. If you're really interested, go to theartofrap.net and you'll see archives. You'll see it. So with the documentary now, when that came out and you had a lot of people on the documentary itself, like Nas, did Dr. Dre, all in, uh, everyone who was influential, Russell Simmons, I think, was on it as well, right? Um, yeah, even even Kanye West was on it. <laughs> yeah, but, and and it came out quite a long time ago. Also, if you guys haven't, I do urge you guys to go and check out the Final Level podcast, which is still available out there. You just got to Google it, and it will come up everywhere. That is Ice T co-host Mick Benzo. And it's doing yep. it, you know what I mean? So they've got a lot of episodes. I actually went through quite a few a couple of nights ago. <laughs> so it's mad, you know? Um, you got to definitely you. got to listen to the Coco one as well, you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I liked about your Lots podcast? It felt like yep. a family. It felt yes. like a family, yep. book. And that's what I loved about your podcast, you know? Um, yes. So this is why I'm urging people to go and check it out because it is really, really cool as far as the way it's given, and to know when it was done. So give us the year you did the podcast. The podcast was me and Ice did, I don't know, four years ago, five years ago, and then we shut it down. We were one of the first to do it, and then we stopped. But you got to check the podcast out with Africa Bambana. We had, we've had we had Africa Bambana's Soul Sonic Force on the show. We've had the Cold Crush Brothers on the show. We had Dougie Fresh on the show. We had Slick Rick on the show. We had the Sugar Hill gang on the show of the auto rap concerts or even the festival because we give a platform and people are unforgivable because what we have done is given you apollo stage the auto rap is your apollo stage for hip-hop once you make it there and you do something there you branch out to do a lot more business so the auto rap is coming it's coming. I'm going to need y'all support. I don't see anybody listening to us because I don't see nobody coming on. Is there anybody on here? Yeah, there's people on here. Don't worry about it. We just do our programming and do what we do. So don't worry about it, bro. But hey, you know, one one is better than none. I'm good. <laughs> Again, um, it's all good. But what I was saying to you is back to the, what was I say? What was the question before? Now I forgot. You made me forget with that. Mm -hmm. You said how many, what What were some of the names that was on the auto rap concerts or festival? And I broke down a few of the names that were on there and I told them they could visit the page if they want because they get more out of it. But uh, I've been doing this thing literally for real mm. for 49 years because hip hop is not 50. It's going to be 49 in 2023. Right. 2024 will be 50. But we're going to roll with the 50 that they're working with because uh, that's what, that's what the world is paying attention to. So, But once I get a platform, I explain to them what the difference is. But we're here. The auto rap is here. So yeah. just on a uh, mention African Bombarda, um, just on a thing, because of obviously the allegations and things that's going on in the media, do you have any um, object? I mean, anything to say on African Bombarda? Yeah, I do. Go for yeah, it. I do. Go they, for it, bro. They should, they should ask Africa Bombarda about it. 
because with my knowledge, I have no idea he's ever done anything wrong to anybody. So that's just me. Now, if they have a question for the Amara, better known as Africa Bambada, they should try to reach out to him. It's not my job or my duty mm. to talk about someone else when they're not in the room. Of course. Or talk about what other people have been saying to add on to it because you don't know what's going on. Right. Why would people do that? Lots of people do that to themselves and don't understand what does that have to do with you? Are they interviewing you or him? If you want to interview me, you interview me. If you want to interview Africa Bambata, you get a chance to interview him. The Amara has done nothing but show love and respect and created a culture for the world to acknowledge. Right. We should be paying more attention to what that is than some allegation that no one can even show me a videotape. As Warner will say, mm. show me the videotape oh. and then I'll believe got you and and i love africa bambada yeah no, Benz only reason i asked you is because again you was a part of it from the beginning and it's only kind yeah. of, only right that yeah. you you know what i mean people listen to the people who were around him and not the people that weren't you know yeah. or trying to create a my, narrative my brother, my brother no question is a bad question mm. i always tell people you can answer what you want mm. you can say what you want but remember these Remember this. Mm. Whatever you say, you got to be able to stand behind it because there's always a repercussion behind something when you make up a story. So versus doing that, mm. why don't you just stay clean with it, man? 100%. And, uh, you, know, you, you asked the right question. We created it. Mm. So it was a legit question. Hey, I'm McBenzo. I am a co-founder of the Universal Zulu Nation. I deal with the Amara. You call him Africa Bambata. But we created something for the world. And I want to say this, that the world is listening. UK is listening. Mm. When you travel outside of the country of New York City, if you go to Australia, Austria, Germany, Japan, China, Africa, when you get off the plane and those people are out there, you know what they say? Zulu! Peace, King! Peace, Aki! Zulu! They're not talking about Africa, goddammit. it. They talking about what we created in the Bronx, the Universal Zulu Nation. Remember that. Put that. Put that in your peace pipe and smoke it. Boom. That is very intelligent. There. Yeah. Now, um, you got a, a record you released recently um, with the legend himself, Melly Mel. Yes, Grandmaster Melly Mel made a Christmas record. A Christ I made a record. I was surprised when it came up as a Christmas record. I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Grandmaster Melly Mel said, it's a Melly Mel Christmas. I made a record called Bring That Party Back because I'll wait for you to play it, then I'll explain to you what it is, if we can play it. Let's, let's hear the Melly Mel record. Hey, we got some Busy B record too. Did I ever send you that stuff? Yo, wait, first some... of all, first of all, oh, I've got oh. Busy B records that he sent me. I've got the Melly Mel record he sent me. I've got the new Benzo record he sent me. Like, I've got records, and trust me, I'm doing a whole a whole mix on this bro for you guys this is going to be a whole special mix i'm doing tomorrow so you have no idea what i'm planning on in the last two days and the funny thing is the strategy we only built like in how many days bro we've been chopping it off got six, to catch six, the energy six. and we're making it happen which is beautiful you know yeah. what i mean on your word as well and on my word don't worry about it when sin does something they gonna hear about it they're gonna hate now and then hit you up on the back low on the down low like yo by the way, did it. <laughs> that's how my life works. So you know, you know it's like this, uh, DJ Sin. When when you talk to somebody, you can actually feel their real energy and don't even have to be by them. You know if it's official, if it's authentic, or if it's fake, or you trying to be cool. You Andre. can't be cool if you're not cool. You can't be authentic if you're not authentic. You can tell them. You can flush out the bullshit. Right, hundred <laughs> percent, bro, hundred percent. And do you know what? Oh, you see that even in twenty twenty, we won a Grammy. See this? Wow! The body count. Look Rock at that, band. and you lot get to see a Grammy again. Who who is the Grammy for? What does it say on it? The Grammy says National Academy Recording Artist and Science Body Count Best Metal Performance in twenty twenty called Bum Rush. Bum Amazing. Rush. Put up the video. You'll see me in the video called Bum Rush. Ice T. 
T again. Body count. So what? we even got a Grammy. Grammy winners up in the building. That's how we do. What? Hey. The art of hey. rap is in the building. You know. Hey, Sid. <laughs> Sid, can I at least tell him this? Sid, I got to tell him this. Go on. The first group to get inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for hip hop. Uh. The first group to get inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for hip hop mm. is Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. And I represented the Furious Five. So Google that. Mick Benzo, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Pull up the letter. You will see it. Could they see you got to be authentic and you can't tell lies? You know? Already loving the stories and everything about yeah. what you're talking about and every all the information you're giving, bro, because it's education. And even the documentary, which I ask everyone to go and watch, The Art of Rap, is an educational documentary. It literally yeah. tells you about the culture, tells you about the business and certain elements that are within hip hop. Amazing. So, bro, share a Fat Joe story, man. I know you got a Fat Joe story. Everybody's got a Fat Joe story nowadays. Even Fat Joe's got better stories himself. Okay, here's one. Me and Fat Joe, uh, full flex, you know, we're out. Fat Joe goes to Africa. We oh. made it to Africa. Right. And there was a man, his name was Rikinia. We went over for three shows. We ended up staying for two goddamn weeks. Somebody tapped Fat Joe on the, on the, on the shoulder and said, I advise you guys to leave because Rikinia had kidnapped DMX. What? A month before we got over there. They held him somewhere. Eventually he got away and went to the council and said he was an American and you know was able to get out. But Rikinia were kidnapping Americans. And they said, Fat Joe, he's gonna try to keep you guys here. I think y'all should leave. Fat Joe looks at me and says, Mick, how many of it, how many is it of us? I said, well, it's 10 of us, plus Ja Rule got about nine. He said, that's 19 people? I said, yeah, Fat Joe. He said, tell you what, Mick, go to go and call the airline and buy everybody a ticket. We're getting the fuck out of here tomorrow. <laughs> Fat Joe said, pay for 19 tickets. I like, they got money. He said, we're getting the fuck out of here. Buy day tickets, Mickey. I said, all right, man, you know, that's a Joey Crack story, man. I, you think, know, I think I heard Jaru on an interview say that something like that happened as well, which is crazy. You confirming it too. That's mad, hey, bro. I, see, that means I'm authentic and I didn't make up a lie. Of course. <laughs> um, do you know what's crazy as well? Traveling in them times, I'm talking about more than a decade ago around Asia, Africa, Europe. It was different times for hip hop artists, you know? There was a lot of learning about different cultures, going into different territories, um, introducing hip hop to a lot of different places. You know what I mean? So I mean, things oh, could go down could anywhere, bro. Hip hop was introduced already. It was, it was very popular after 20 years of being in the game already it was there. It's like the basic is 10 years before hip hop and then 10 years while hip hop is running. Right. It was hard to go into a city like Detroit or Chicago or Miami or Atlanta because you was a star and you was on stage and you were rocking the stage and you'll say after party at the Holiday Inn. You're telling the girls that, not the guys. The guys would show up, be like, yo, man, I was make sure my girl went over here, man, because I'd I fuck one y'all up over here. You know, it was harder to travel then than it is now. It's more peaceful now to travel. It was hard when we was doing these tours. We opened the door up for these young rappers today to do what they're doing. And they act like sometimes they have no respect mm. for what we did to get them where they were at. I, That's I, the only problem I have. I heard in the early days, people like Big L were offered deals by Diddy, Puff Daddy, Puff Daddy and people like that. Is that true? Uh, early bad he... boy or Uptown, maybe? Nah, Puffy never offered Big L a, a deal. It was, it was Rockefeller. They were going to give oh, him a deal. okay, yeah, right. That's dope. That's yeah, dope. Damon Dash. Damon nice. Dash was Damon Dash wanted to sign him, you know. But, you know, I mean, you know, you got to throw names around. But what I'm trying to say is the new rappers because they're not hip-hop artists hip-hop has elements see people don't realize 
rapping and hip hop is two different things. Would you like me to explain the difference? Go for it. Hip hop has elements. Hip hop has a DJ. So we know Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Africa Bambata and the Soul Sonic Force, DJ Charlie Chase and Tony Tone never leaving the girls alone with the Cold Crush Brothers. We know the DJ name as well as the MC. Right. Today, you got LL Cool J and his DJ. You know his DJ name. You know Houdini, the DJ name. You know, um, I'm just trying to throw some names out. You know Bismarcky, DJ name. You knew Big Daddy Kane, DJ name. Please tell me who is little TJ's DJ. Can mm -hmm. you tell me? Right. No, you're right. You're completely no. right. It's rap music. It's not hip hop. Hip hop has elements. Sometimes you may even say break dance on stage with the MC rocking. With rap music, you only get the rap on stage. You don't even know who's Cardi B's DJ. I don't know. That's rap music. It's not hip hop, baby. It's not hip hop. But it's still rap. And my problem is that the rappers today have no respect for the hip hop artists that got them where they're at today. Because hip hop was hip hop was developed and designed to work on a fifteen block to the left and a fifteen block to the right. You just want to come out your building and be, yo, that's McBenzo, that's my man. Yo, he nice on the mic, boy. Yo, when Bam play, you gotta check him out. He nice. Mm. That's what hip hop was. Hip hop evolved into other states and countries because it was a way to get people out the ghetto. Mm. So by doing that, when you see an Ice T or an Ice Cube or Dr. Dre or Puffy, I'm yelling those big names with the real money, you don't see them causing conflict with people. You don't hear them beefing with another rapper and want to get into a fucking shootout. If you want to do that, stay in the hood and get out of the game of the music industry. The music industry is built so that you can become successful. Not being an idiot. That that's is, what the music is built for. That's what all the kids need to learn in this generation because it seems like they're using music as other things and that's what they need to take on board. Um, yeah, man. Mick. I never saw, I never saw a rapper yeah. want to become a drug dealer. Right. I see a drug dealer want to become a rapper. Right. See the difference? Of course. But some you're trying to clean their money up and get out of the streets, which is cool. But once you get there, let's not cause confrontation with everybody else that's doing what you're doing. It's called music. Young guns, young ones, young guns, listen. You're doing something to get your family out of the ghetto. You're making money. You're making more money than we made when we came up to do this. The door is open for you. But reach back, open the door and reach back. Some of these classic artists are still here. We're not in a wheelchair. We're not walking with a cane. We still are relevant. But you guys have the platform now. And no way in shape or form should I be mad because when we did it, our parents didn't understand the music. We do not want to become our parents to you. Mm. We only want you to educate yourself on where the music came from. And if you like the music, go back and listen to some of the good records. Listen to some of the lyricists. Get a get a uh, Rock Him on your record. Get a Big Daddy Kane on your record. Get a Grandmaster Kaz on your record. Get a Melly Mel on your record. Call a Ice T on your record. Call a Busy B on your record. There's room. One hundred. Door has been open. The door has been open, and all you did was walk in the door. You didn't even have to open the door. You didn't, it wasn't cracked. It was open for you to get in. Show some respect. Do you the know? Rap, do you know who you rap. remind me of, sir? Do you know who you remind me of, Mick? In a big way, you remind me when you're talking of KRS-One a lot. Wow. Well, I am a universal Zulu relation, and I told you the fifth element is knowledge. Right. So why why would I come in the knowledge part of it versus just being the glamorous things that we do have and get out of it? The glamour's going to come. And the art of rap wasn't built around the cars, the homes, 
and the, and the flossy jewelry. It was built around the craft of how, what stimulates your brain to do this music? How do you write that record? Maybe you smoke weed. Maybe you cooking chicken. Maybe you playing a jazz record and it sparks you to do something. I don't care about how many goddamn cars you got. I don't give a damn about how many chains you wear around your neck. And I damn sure don't care about your house. And I don't care about you flossing your money on the internet. Because all you're doing is inviting. You're inviting. You are inviting the stick-up kids to come see you. And that's where you make the mistake at. Because you're still playing hood, but you're doing music. Right. I ask you to stop. Stop. There's no way to stop, but there's a way to slow it down. Because when a plane comes down out the air, it doesn't stop, it slows down. When you're riding that car and that red light comes, it doesn't stop, it slows down. So eventually, if you slow down the things that you guys are doing, young rap the things that you're doing, it can come to a stop. So let's slow down a little bit, man, and reach out. Even call the art of rap. Get on one of the shows. You guys got a great audience. Let an audience see you rocking with classic artists so they can take notes on what hip-hop is. We, remember, we said we're going to make that happen don't, shortly. Don't worry. For 2023, you're getting my support, and we're going to make this happen. We're going to make this big. And again, I keep telling you, I have no idea. <laughs> this is going to get out of control. So, um, again, the education is a must. I love the fact that you're giving something to the youth to actually go back by as well, because a lot of these guys don't understand the concept of hip-hop and what it actually means to be a hip-hop artist. And they do think it's the glams and the glitz and all that. Um so I love what you're saying. Again, you remind me of KRS-One when you're talking, bro. You've got to keep talking. We've got to set up some lectures for you, bro. For real. <laughs> and also, big up Ice-T. Big up your family. Everyone in your family as well, man. Because, oh, big up your daughter for yesterday. Yeah, yeah, big yeah, her yeah, up, man. Up, yeah, mad up, love, mad love. And you know what I mean? Big up. Nice family. So look, I respect what you're doing. There's going to be a lot that we're bringing to the table. Believe that because this is not the end of Mick Benzo. Benzo, this is like the beginning. And this is the beginning of 2023 where a lot is coming at you from Mick Benzo. And a lot is coming at you from the art of rap and more. So you've got to remember, like, first of all, just take note on this. Go share it. Go make sure everybody who you know hears this and takes note of it because it's big. I have got a mix special that's going to come up tomorrow, which I'm going to be putting busy B. I'm going to put a whole bunch of music that only Mick Benzo wants me to promote on this. And this is going to also get shared to everybody on Mixcloud and all that. And yep. play that body count. Pull up that body count record called Bum Rush on YouTube. Bum Rush. Like Public Enemy record, Bum Rush. Play that bum rush. Award. Go and bum check rush. that out right now. <laughs> yes, Grammy Award winners in the building. Know this. Um, big up, man. Big up, Benzo. I, I need to talk to you about so much more, man. I wanted to, when I was talking to you at the beginning about how you got into hip hop, I wanted to actually talk about where you, got, where you went to school, which hood. You know what I mean? How you connected with certain people, all of that kind of stuff. Because I think that story is relevant too, bro. Um, very well, relevant. I went to a school called James Monroe High School. It's at 1300 Point Avenue mm. uh, in the Boogie Down Bronx. I grew up on, I grew up in a circle in New York City. I lived on 174th Street and Vice Avenue. Right. I moved. 174th and Vice. I went to 1034 Freeman Street. From 1034 Freeman Street, I went to 1056 Boynton Avenue. From Boynton Avenue, I went straight to Bronx River Houses. But my mother always lived there. I grew up with my grandmother. My right. mom's always lived in Bronx River, so I was always a native there. But I ended up moving into Bronx River Houses. And that's where I was in a gang on 174th Street. I was in a gang called the Peacemakers. When I went to Bronx River, I was in a gang called the Black Spades. Hey, you got to be, hey, listen, man, you can't just be flying colors. You get fucked up out there in them days. You know, they beat you up with their hands and bats, you know, maybe a knife. You got stabbed. They didn't have as many guns as y'all have today. And I want to say, I want to touch on that, too, because I'm joking, but it, it comes to my mind that brothers don't fight anymore. 
We used to have fist fights in the street, I mean, real fist fights, you know? You get beat up, you come back out, maybe you fight them tomorrow, but maybe not. Other than that, it was all good. But we never let nobody come in the hood and do nothing to us. See, you grew, up, you grew up in a crazy generation in New York City, bro. This is why I asked this question is because you, um, the years you grew up was probably, what, 70s, 80s, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. And yes. that, that was a t turning time in New York itself, if you think about it, within the movement, without, within the streets, within the drugs, the police, everything was changing. Everything was in a transition mode. And <laughs> it's a lot of that that generation had to put on a fight for most of this generation to be privileged you know what i mean we, we barely had a, we barely had an apartment building to live in there because you go. The, no, the landlords were truly burning their own damn buildings so they can get the insurance money at one time the bronx was known as fort apache meaning it was burnt down condemned buildings so the best place to live would have been the projects because the tenement buildings were being burnt down. Wow. You never see them do it, but we knew because this is what they say. The right. landlords were burning their own buildings, man. We grew up hard. We grew up when, let me tell these young rappers something. I grew up when it was powder milk, mm. it was powder eggs, and they didn't have no fucking pampers, no loves. We had diapers, okay? Meaning it was a cloth, like your, your towel, you shit in it, your mother had to wash it out with a washboard, okay? Mm. We grew up on the government cheese. I mean, they doing that now, but we grew up on getting free lunches and going to pick up free food, big peanut butter and jelly. We grew up poor, but we didn't want to stay poor. So we, as the young kids, came up with this form called hip-hop to survive and save ourselves. Right. And what you were doing, what you were doing, is you're tearing it down. I'm gonna tell you why. Because you're fighting him, and him is fighting each other. Him and him is getting in the shootouts. And you're in the music industry, dog. That is celebrity status. You don't need that. Right. Hundred percent. Stop creating. Stop creating confrontation, please. So can let me raise on a little point. So confrontation has seemed to be a part of hip hop from the beginning if you think about it in a, in some aspect because there's always no. been competition and there's always no. been like the battles between different artists Conf confrontation and battling is totally different right okay here we go here we go i'm glad you said that there was a battle by a man named kumo d yes he's been on the stage with me and the treacherous three two i forgot Big up and, kumo the d. and the battle was against a guy named busy b mm. Chief Rocker Busy B and um, Kumo D said, Celeb celebrity clubs and bullshit like those. Those are kind of stuff that everybody knows. But in a battle like this, who you think they choose? If you think it's you, you're going to hear some booze. So battling is always competition. When you play basketball, don't you think you better than that other team? When you play football, don't you think you better than that other team? When you play soccer, don't you think you better than that team? When you're a hip-hop artist, you're better than any fucking body that touched the mic. You're the greatest. See, the difference is called battle, not confrontation. After the battle, that don't mean my crew is going to mount up and start getting into a fight with you. Oh, another one. Since you want to talk about LL Cool J, right, is a bad motherfucker. Yo, he went against a lot of people in his career. He 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 had it out with a lot of people in the battle scene. LL LL Cool J went up against Kumo D and Ice T. Yeah, we know we know Kumo D can get him. Right, but LL was so motherfucking dope. He hated him because he was really good. Right. But there was never no confrontation. It was battling, brother. So what do you there's never been confrontation in hip hop. Oh, uh, you might have had PM Dawn and maybe, you know, Karis push him off a stage. You get one or two fights because you're human. Mm. Um Karis won in Melly Mel. Mm. South South Bronx is out. It's hot. Right. It's the hot Melly Mel. 
who's my brother, goes up against him. Hey, it wasn't a battle, but that South South Bronx shit was so hard, it was goddamn. So again, understand the difference when you say words. Oh, it's always confrontation. No, it's not. It's balance. Okay, so let's Los Angeles Lakers and the Philadelphia 76ers are having a confrontation. Mm. No, they're having a playoff, and one team think he's better, and they want to win the game. Right. That's what this is about. It's not about after you get on the mic, you're on the radio, yeah, you know, because, you know, me and my man was going to get at him because, you know what I'm saying, that wasn't right because, you know what I'm saying. No, I don't know what the fuck you saying. I mm. said I don't understand it. Right. Got you. Music, music is a survival kit that we put out here for y'all. Right. Y'all didn't have to. Y'all, did, y'all wasn't two live crew. You never got locked up for saying pump that pussy, rock that pussy. You did not go to jail for that. Right. Two live crew did. Right. Ice T almost went. Right. With cop killer. We right. opened the door. We didn't say we were cop killers. It's a voice. It's almost like when Arnold Schwarzenegger shot up the whole motherfucking precinct on that movie. I don't know the name of the movie. Y'all know it. Mm. The Terminator. Right. Was that a movie? Was that a movie or was it real? It was a movie. Right. So Ice-T is making a record talking about cop killer because he's saying people want to say this, but they don't have a voice. We are the voice for them. We are the voice for them. We took the chance. And the goddamn door is open for y'all, and y'all closing it slowly but surely. But it's 49 years, coming up on 50 years of hip-hop. Right. Don't close the doors, man. So It's a multi-billion dollar business for corporations because of us. And we're not eating out of that. But the art of rap want to eat out of it. The art of rap even want you on the show. But I'm asking you, if you come on this show, this is a family orientated show. Mm. Any confrontation, you will be going home. You right. heard of Suge Knight. You heard of Suge Knight. Of course. Well, I'm Suge Day when it comes <laughs> to my business. I love that. I love that. What? London Heart Radio. So, um, one more question since we're on that topic. Do you mind me asking you a very, very, a little bit of a deeper question? Shit, I don't know. What happened? You're asking me. Do you... oh, I don't know what happened. I don't see you. Oh, no, your video. Just so... turn your video on again. Let me see. I didn't touch nothing. What are you talking about? Yeah, you vanished. Yeah, you vanished on the screens. I didn't basically. touch nothing. Let me see. I don't know what the. What the? Hold on. What the hell, boy? I'll turn this around. Where's my mouth? What's this? One? That was this getting screen? interesting, bro. So, where's the screen? What the fuck happened? You curse yeah. a lot, bro. By the way, yeah. for radio. <laughs> anyway, you guys are listening to London Hot Radio. It is snowing out there. It is frosty as hell. So make sure you guys are taking care of yourself. Whatever you guys are doing out there in the city tonight. Um, madness in Brixton last night. Whatever that was, people need to stop, man. Um, Big concert, big concert, big African artist coming to shell it down and y'all acting like that, that is not good. So any what like that Brixton incident last yesterday night, mad. Um people need to stop, bro. This is music. Just like Ben Benzo was saying, this is music, bro. Why are you guys going in and thousands of people, hundreds of people trying to force themselves into venues, big venues? It's crazy, bro. So Everyone in Brixton last night, I hope you guys took care of yourself and got home safe last night. Um, we've got Benzo back in the building. <laughs> so I was going to get deep with you. Can I get deep for a second? Real, a little bit deep. You mentioned a couple of key names. Um, so I just wanted to put in my little thing because I'm a very, very big hip hop fan. I'm, I'm like an encyclopedia, man. I've no, I know a lot about hip hop. And the thing I want to ask you, because you're friends with him as well, so it came all in that same scenario type thing. Ice T had some kind of um, an issue with Tupac at one stage. Um, right, right or wrong? Was there any? All right, Benzo, um, your volume's gone. We can't hear you anymore. Yes, I got you. you hear me now? Yes. No, 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 no. Tupac 
when we met Tupac, he was with a group right. that's called Digital Underground. Right. Do the hump, the hump. Stop mm. what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the style and the image. You know, that's Correct. The, you know, Ice was schooling Tupac because Tupac was very militant. So he was talking to him about life. And Tupac was very, very intelligent. Mm. And that's what he was telling him. Like, Pac, you don't need to act like a gangbanger, man. Mm. They respect you already. I'm not a gangbanger. I've never joined a gang. I'm Ice-T. But they respect me because I showed love and they showed me love back. Right. They know I was stepping on their territory. You don't have to gangbang. He was having a conversation with Tupac. Never, ever, ever, ever did he have any confrontation with him. It was more of an education talk. Right. Tupac was out there. We knew Tupac when he was, he wanted to rap. Nice. B Money and Shock G were the two front men, if you remember. Yeah, Shock G, definitely. And he's like, he's like yo, they won't let me rap. I mean, I, I got something to say. And then right. all of a sudden, Tupac broke out his shell and rocked the house. Never no confrontation. Always L-O-V-E there. So whoever said that is a ball player. You know what they do? That must be a person that used one wash rag to mm. wash up everything. Right. He washes his face with the same rag. And then he washes his balls and his ass with it as well. And then he washes his face again. That means he's a ball face liar. <laughs> Do you know on this on this topic, which is another important thing? So there's a lot of podcasts that's going on right now. There's a lot of talk going on by all sorts of people. Some people who were in hip hop and associated. Some people who were just watching. Um, so this is where a lot of the different talks and different perceptions coming out from in different various ways. So what do you say to a lot of these perceptions that are coming out, especially from the people that weren't involved in hip hop or didn't have as um, history in it? I think what they should do is contact the person that they want to talk about mm. or really do some real in-debt research. Again, right. the internet is the encyclopedia for people like they say dummies for Max. It's for dummies of people because they can Google and find anything they want. Honey. And then... If they actually want to find out something, reach out to the person. On our podcast of the Final Level Podcast with Ice-T and McBenzo, we never talked about one person that wasn't in that building. Mm. We interviewed the people we wanted to talk to, whether it was Africa Bambata, whether it was Mob Deep, whether it was, um, I'm trying to think of some name, whether it was... Um, Grandmaster Cads, whether it was Coco, we talk about them when they're in the building. Right. People cannot do G O S S I P and say that they're journalists. Mm. They're more gossipers than journalists. Right. When you have the person in the building, if you have nothing good to say about them, then don't speak about them because you don't know anything about them. Have you broke bread with them? Have you hung out with them? Mm. Have you eaten at their table? Mm. You don't know much about it. You're just doing he said, she said. And there's thing, what uh, Houdini said, there's a rumor about you, about me and the crew, something you weren't supposed to do. It's a rumor. Right. Stop the rumors. The oh, record, we made records for you. We made records for you. Right. We made records. How the rumors get started. We even told you. Ice-T even told you. I know it's radio. Why well, call a girl a B-I-T-C? B-I-T-C-H. Because some of you ends are too. Right. See? You know? It ain't just about the women, man. Because you guys seem to gossip a lot too. And it's more, it's more gentlemen on the internet talking like they Wendy Williams when they're nobodies. They'll never be a journalist. They'll never be on a real TV show. What happened is, is the internet has made everybody a TV star. Right. Everybody has everybody has a platform. Oh, go to my YouTube channel. There's a YouTube. It's not a channel. Mm. Yo, check me out on my podcast. You're not on the radio. Right. Everybody's a star and everybody has something to say about somebody else. I have nothing to say about anybody except... 
Let's stop the gossiping about people, man. Let's tell good stories. Hundred. If you got bad story to tell about somebody, stay out of it. Hundred percent. So on that tip now, um, on that note, the internet. For as far as the music industry, um, we know that it can be bad and it can be good. Used the right way or used as exploitation, right? Uh, what is the main benefits you've seen over when hip hop first started? People were hustling. You had to go and sell your own records on the roads and get it actually to the record stores. Carry your record boxes to gigs. Like people don't understand the effort it took back in the day. Even to make a record, you needed a sampler, you needed a mixing board, you needed a cup things. You couldn't just do it on the computer, right? So. Like, give me how you've seen life, because you've gone through generations, gaps, you've seen all technology go through hip hop, see how it was utilized. So at this point, after like decades, how do you see the evolution and um, what's your insight on it? I mean, a long time ago, <laughs> Ice-T came up with this thing called MP3. I mean, like, yo, what are you talking about? He said, oh, we could sell it on the internet. You know, stuff like I said, it never worked. But it happened. The internet has really damaged the music business. Mm. Because, okay, in some part of a way, the young kid that lives on 13th Street can go to his um, garage band on the computer and cut a record. And he can actually put the record out. But see, in the old days, the most important part about a record was to buy it and look at the inline card. Oh, shit, special thanks to Sin UK. Special thank my man McBenzo. Big up this part, the producer, the engineer. There were names on there. Mm. There were names on there. That was a big, important part of buying the record. You got a chance to read the inline card on whoever produced it, and you got a shout-out. Today, you just put a record up, and that's that. That was like one of the biggest excitements to actually read the inlay card and see all the information. It was such an exciting, exciting part to bring home the, and unwrap the package, you know? And even to see the little extra pictures they had in there and all the, everything was really, really cool. So, yeah, you're right. No, but on the second hand, the guy on 13th Street who went to his garage band on the Mac computer, he made a record. And he didn't need no producer. He engineered it right there. He mixed it right there. And he went right up. He put it on, you know, iTunes and Spotify. And, and the world gets to see it. So the kid doesn't have to fight to go to a label. And most of these kids are making money on Spotify. And they're making money on YouTube. They don't need no record label no more. The record label became obsolete. The only thing the record label can do for an artist today is market the music. Outside of that, if the kid has a few dollars, he'd get in the car and go from state to state and bring his own little, um, little disc drive and plug that in at a radio and tell them play it and pay. You know, you want to do payola? They doing pay? They still doing payola? So don't don't believe the hype. They doing payola. Um, so it has this. Ups and downs, but we miss to read the credits. We miss that, you know? We miss that. That's okay. I think. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Basically now, uh, yeah, payola still exists. Um, <sighs> transitions, man, the music industry's had. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. And a lot of information you're giving out. Um, I'm loving it. Um, we're going to have to do a second part on this, bro, because I haven't finished with the discussions. I've got too many questions and still need to get more into your life. You know what I mean? But you're not letting me get there because you're giving out a lot of information every time I ask a question. <laughs> Um, another person you mentioned, Big Suge Knight. Uh, did you ever have uh, occasions to meet him? Yes, I met Suge. I met Suge Knight. He came to New York City one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, him. Just how is he as a personality and a character? He's been a big pop, big, big bigger than life character to hip hop man in in hip hop. You know. 
Suge Knight was making a lot of sense when he came to New York. He came. Don't worry about the source of words. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about he came to New York City and he went to a restaurant known as Sylvia's on 125th Street with the Zulu Nation members. Myself, Rest in Peace, B.O., Africa Bambada, and a few other people. Mm. And Suge was coming to have a meeting because he made a lot of sense. He says, when a person does something in Los Angeles, California, when it comes to records, I suggest they check in with me because, you know, I'm running this here town over here. And they should show the respect. And if y'all ain't doing that in New York, I don't know what y'all doing. And we asked him a question. You know who Africa Band Bot is? And Suge Knight's answer was, no, I don't. And we said, well, you should know because that's the armor raw. That's who helped create hip hop. He said, yeah, no disrespect. What I'm saying, if y'all doing something in New York and people come to New York, all these record companies is signing these artists and y'all ain't making no money out and you guys are the creators of hip hop, how does that work? He was making sense, but we were so much on love, peace, and having fun, we wasn't thinking about he's making sense to us. Because we have created something and the record labels do not look back at us. If you can remember, there were only independent record labels when we first came out in the 70s. There wasn't no Warner Brothers. There wasn't no Atlantic Records. There wasn't no Electric Records. There wasn't no Columbia Records. There wasn't no Sony Records. There were no Epic Records. It was Tommy Boy. It was Select Records. It was Priority Records. It was, you know, little boutiques in, in New York, uh, Paul Wintley. Major labels didn't give a damn about our music till they figured out that that music was making money. And we still ain't eating. But the art of rap, once again, is asking them, listen, be a support on keeping the culture alive because it is a multi-billion dollar business. And we help you to get it there. Help us stay above flow. The art of rap needs your help to stay above flow. Buyers, promoters, sponsors, we need your help. You have made money off of the culture itself. Either you played it in one of your commercials or you have it in one of your ads. Hip-hop is powerful. Show us the love. Bo, that's big what you said about Suge Knight. Again, very educational. Um, very revealing, actually. You know what I'm saying? Again, big, big character in hip-hop. Um, I again, we need to do this on another occasion. We're going to have to make another episode, if possible, if I get your permission for that, mate. Can I? Also, you're going to send me that songs because tomorrow I'm going to do a special mix as well and put that out um, on the music that you want me to play strictly. Yeah. Plus the new record that's going to be coming out tomorrow. Um, a lot to do, bro. Um, we have got Flexi coming up at 8 o'clock UK time, which is after me. Uh, Dancehall, Jamaica, all that good stuff she's going to play. Um, also, Mick Benzo, you've got to go check out the Art of Rap documentary. You've got to go and check out the podcast with him and Ice-T. You've got to go check out the new single, which I'm going to be playing tomorrow, and you're going to hear it all Christmas, all Christmas on London Hot Radio. And we're going to play a whole bunch of other exclusives that we're going to get from Mick Benzo, man. Um, Mick, your family, bro, know that. So yes. anything now we want to put out, anything that we got to say or anything you got to address, you just give me a call and we set it up. Any music that you got from people, you send it to me and we're going to keep that music alive, bro. 100. You're going Thanks. to hear that getting played every day, bro. So... What we're about to do is crazy. You guys have got to look out for 2023, the Art of War, the Art of Rap concert, which is coming up all over America. Um, we're going to hopefully be a part of that as well. And um, when are we going to do the next talk, ben Benzo? Because I ain't finished with you, bro. <laughs> I have not finished with you, B. It's too much to talk about, bro. You're even... I don't know nothing. <laughs> you don't know nothing. Yeah, that's that's what this interview has said. We've been here almost two hours, bro. I haven't got to play music. I ain't got to do none of that because you've just been giving us information, my bro. And that's what an interview is about. I love it. 
extremely yeah. dope. And I want to get into even more like the times of growing up in New York and all that. I think it's crazy, in, crazy um, interesting. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's a movie win itself, Benzo. That's a movie yeah. right there. Um, yeah. I do. So I do want you guys to keep checking out the stuff. We're going to keep posting it. Um, big up everyone who has listened in, commented. Uh, we got a few announcements that we're going to give you over the week as well. Once I've spoken to Benzo and we've started working those things out as well. Um, big up Busy B, man. Big up Busy B. We got that whole family and that whole collective. We're going to be playing that music soon as well. Tomorrow. Big him up for sure. Big up Melly Mel, the Grandmaster. And big up that whole family right there. Like, and also big up Ice-T. Ice-T for the contribution and the success and the help that he's given a lot of people and the platforms he's raised. And Mick Benzo as well for being part of it and... Having his back, having everyone's back, and having hip hop's back in general. You know? Benzo, you've got hip hop's back. That's something that I've got to make yeah, known. I, I, and I got, religion just need to get our back too. Stand stand with us, not behind us. Did you not tell me your Shug Day? Yeah, Shug Day was good, B. Bro, yeah, don't Shug worry about your, sh your shoulders. I believe can carry hip hop. Don't worry. You're good, bro. You are good, and I'm going to help you with that. So. We're, we're all good. Big up everyone in New York City I've played with, everyone I've worked with, from Uncle Murder to Mr. Cheeks, the Lost Boys. Uh, like, everyone, man. I'm going to forget a whole bunch of people, but you all exist and you all helped me in, in my career somewhere. Big up Dr. Dre's son, Curtis Young. Big up everyone on the West Coast. Um, yo, this is massive. We're going to do some connections. I'm going to make some phone calls for Benzo. We're going to try and create more. Go check out Young Dirty Bastard's song that we produced last year. That's out there on Spotify and all that. <laughs> Bruh, we working and we're going to build a bridge now. Benzo, you coming down to England? Yes. When are we making that happen, Shook Day? <laughs> so, that was Benzo. Um... Everyone stay safe. Have a great winter. Do stay warm because it is really, really cold out there in London City. Um, so whatever you do, do it safely. Have fun. Celebrate. Do some good stuff with family over the holidays and love one another. That was me, Chop It Up, DJ Sin with Mick Benzo, The Art of Rap, co-host yes, of yes, Ice T. Yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, I just in don't worry. Out. I carried on the show, so you're good. You're good. You back? Do you want? <laughs> I was just doing the the outro, my boy. Yeah, but... I'm gonna tell. I'd rather see you than be you. I'm Mick Benzo. I got to go. I got things to do. People to see, place to go. And good God, be good. I'm Mick Benzo. And that was London Hot Radio. We out. London Hot Radio.